So this video is about AI enabled PM versus AI PM. This is the explainer video that you were thinking about that what is happening in the world of product management? Why is everybody moving towards AI and what will happen to conventional PMs? Hello world, today we are deep diving into the world of AI product management. It is basically divided into two parts, AI enabled PM and AI native PM. The AI enabled PM is someone who uses tools like ChatGPT, Grok and other tools like Lovable, Replit, etc. to make their prototypes or make their workflow very easy. If you are a startup founder, if you are anyone who would essentially want to derive value today from hiring a product manager, the AI enabled PM would be the version that you would be trying for. This is the person who will do better discovery using ChatGPT. This is the person who will do better prototyping using tools like Lovable. This is the person who will use tools like UIZard to make screenshots. This is the person who would use Stitch to create mockups and eventually smoothen the product development process. In this scenario, a product manager would be someone who would be writing a very good instruction set and keeping it extremely close-knit and valuable for their audience, their users and as well as their internal stakeholders. So now you're using ChatGPT to essentially give PRDs and using cursor to ship out your code snippets so that you can show prototypes to your team. Does that make you an AI product manager? Not necessarily. If you loosely define the term, you are an AI product manager. But if you go deep, you will realize that this term has basically two distinctions. The first distinction being in the first place that you will be using AI to essentially speed up your workflow. But on the contrary, an AI native PM would be someone who would be using foundational models and tuning them across to give better responses through the intelligence layer. Let me help you explain with an example. Earlier, the products which were plus AI, you were using AI as part of some level of a workflow to essentially enable your customer to achieve a certain thing. For example, you need the aggregation of transactions or the spend history of someone based on the past transactions. You are using an AI model to predict that what will be the purchase cycle of this particular person in the next month. But on the contrary, AI-first products do it very differently. How do they do it? They essentially create the first interaction to the intelligence layer, which means that you can go into an AI native product and you can just ask, tell me the likely spend that I will do in the next one month. And the intelligence layer would automatically take care of your transaction records, aggregate them together, pull them in a format and give it to you. So the intelligence is making decisions for you. This is where the role of an AI native PM comes. That how do you essentially enable the intelligence to become better with better data, better modeling and also better infrastructure. And that is why the people who come from this background and help improve foundational models like in OpenAI, in Anthropic and other places, they are AI native PMs. They are fundamentally the PMs who come from a machine learning background, who essentially have a background in writing code and improving models, understanding model inference, understanding trans transparency, understanding interoperability, understanding explainability, and they will improve your foundational model through which your generative AI particular tool is going to give you better responses. On the contrary, the PMs who still work on the workflow code layer or the infrastructure layer are the AI enabled PMs. They can be a fintech PM, they can be a health tech PM, they can be an edtech PM, they can be any sort of PMing where you are just integrating AI to speed up your workflows. Now, let me give you an example. Meet Shravantikku. He is the senior PM of search in this company called Edureka. Edureka is a data science or a course selling company or an edtech company. And now they really have this problem that they have 200 plus courses, but people are just buying 20 of them or 25 of them. So it is the moral responsibility of Shravan, who is the search PM, to understand that what is the problem. Is the problem that people are not looking for these courses or is the problem that discovery of these courses are poor? So what Shravan will do, he will essentially take out the customer data or the search data and put it into ChatGPT and say, give me the top three reasons why this particular people are dropping off from search. The reasons can be as simple that there is a no result rate, the search term not matching or the self search algorithm.
algorithm not working in conjunction of where it, where it has to work. So Shravan figures out these th three things. He writes a PRD, again goes to ChatGPT, writes a structure of the PRD from objective, what are the core problem statements, how do you solve them, what is the solution, what are the metrics, and designs an experiment. Then essentially goes to Lovable and says that is there a UI change or a backend flow that we wish to change, basically which means that how do you do better relevance search in search, how do you make the UI better to show these new courses that you have and uses Lovable to make that screenshot and eventually goes to Cursor and creates a small mock API and gives it to the engineers to showcase that this is the flow that he wants. Now he has moved away from just writing to actually shipping and this is what is actually happening in most of good companies. Shopify very recently said that most product managers would now have to prototype. Simultaneously, Google is moving away from this culture of writing, which is equally essential to moving to shipping out prototypes, which will give you a better abstraction of the product that the product manager wants. So Shravan in this scenario is a AI enabled PM. Now, assume another example that Shravan is this machine learning engineer who has done his PhD from IISC Bangalore and now is working for a startup where they are improving the model inference of general models like Servum, like ChatGPT, like multiple other models like Anthropic, like Mistral. He now joins there as an engineer and slowly and steadily realizes that the output of the core model is what defines intelligence for a lot of people. Right? And in this scenario, since intelligence is the important bit that if your model is flawed, your output response will be flawed. For example, Shravan goes and he wants to book a ticket from Chandigarh to Bombay. Right? If the model doesn't really understand the prompt, which is, can you book me a ticket in the cheapest possible time and the cheapest possible cost from Chandigarh to Bombay tomorrow or day after tomorrow, whenever the date is, right? And the model screws up or hallucinates to a different location or a different price or a different time that will be a poor response and this is where now machine learning engineers and AI native PMs are really working. They really are working on the intersection of layer of that how good prompts or not so good prompts can still effectively lead to very good responses and this is where a PM who is working on improving the model output, the model inference, the understanding of all, all of these things in order to help a person get better intelligent answers from these LLM or Gen AI based products or AI powered products is an AI native PM. Now, we have to understand that there is still common ground. The product development process for an AI enabled PM follows these steps. You do your discovery, understand the problem, you frame the problem, which is you define the problem. You then essentially go to a point where you want to prioritize the pain points in the problem. Once you prioritize the pain points, then you essentially move to the solution space where you build the high level solution of that problem. Then you go deep down and make deeper user flows about the problem. And finally, you make some analytical metrics to measure that whether the flow is working or not. And you write the pros and cons and maybe you create a GTM strategy. This, these are the seven, eight steps in the product development process. But on the contrary, for an AI native PM, this process will remain the same, but it will be more on the lines of how good the intelligence is performing. So for, for example, doing your discovery would be, would an LLM be a very good place to start the discovery of this particular product? Like for example, understanding the lyrics or creating new lyrics to a song, right? A conventional flow creator app might not understand it very well, but intelligence based on the past data that it has, that is because of the pre-training that they did and the fine tuning on particular ingested data of poems, it will be able to generate a new poem. You would be able to see that in Instagram at a lot of amazing places where captions are auto made, right? In this scenario, but that person is also doing discovery that is it the right problem? for LLMs to solve, right? Because there can be a problem where even 1% error and LLMs are probabilistic in nature that we know about can result to huge consequences, which can be death of an individual, healthcare outcomes, financial outcomes, security outcomes. So we cannot make AI first products, we can make AI enabled products over there. So in this process also, you have to first do discovery, whether this problem is solvable through mining, then define that how good you can solve this problem, what are the pain points, how do you prioritize them, you come to the solution space and eventually put an intelligent layer over there and finally you make the designs and eventually you get the metrics which 
the LLM can again help you. So there is a lot of common ground. Only thing is there is one more model behavior and one more skill set of understanding intelligence at its technical levels is what an AI native PM would have. So if you would see PMs at OpenAI, they are typically researchers who have spent considerable amount of time in machine learning. So, but now since we have talked about the common ground, let's talk about the com the skill set differences that they have. In terms of AI fluency, an AI enabled PM would not be as fluent in AI as an AI native PM because the native PM understands model, understands code and understands doing it very very well. The AI enabled PM can be data savvy. He can essentially be a very good person in order to doing analysis in basic tools like Excel and other things like that maybe use R and to a certain bit of Python but an AI native PM would have deep machine learning skill set. So that person would be able to write a script, play with large databases, play clusters on the internet and eventually use it in model inference. In terms of AI enabled PM they would definitely speak in plain English, they would use growth terms, basic terms of product management, which is discovery, execution, wireframing, prototyping, and have more customer empathy. But on the contrary, AI native PMs, while they have all of this, they also will have deep understanding of deep technical jargon, which will be very relevant in contextual situations. An AI enabled PM, since he's using an outside workflow, doesn't have to consider a lot about ethics. Probably they do, a lot of places would have to understand, but a AI native PM has to definitely understand ethics and responsibility because it's a probabilistic response and it is tuned on the fact that what data are you giving that response would be very similar to that and finally continuous learning which is a part of both of them the AI enabled PM has to eventually understand the skill sets of the intelligent layer or the software 3.0 where intelligence makes decisions for you not code and eventually an AI native PM would also do that continuous learning in order to understand better scaling better scaling of intelligence better accessibility of intelligence and better usage of intelligence in terms of strategic and tactical focus vision and product strategy is very very similar for AI enabled PM strategy is more about AI is a means to an end to achieve a certain goal on the contrary, for AI native PM, AI is the core thing. It is to improve the core intelligence layer and the strategy has to sit well with that. If the tech isn't ready, a good AI PM knows when to pivot or not. Right. One another very interesting things in both of the places is that even the AI native PM would have prototypes which are at model capable. On the contrary, an AI native an AI enabled PM would have to ship out the actual prototype to show his team. And finally, metrics of success. There can be core model level metrics of F1 score, latency, explainability, prompt design, hallucination rate, which is for an AI native PM. But for an AI enabled PM, it will be more on the lines of revenue growth, profit, engagement, and things like that which are general product metrics. Now let, let's really understand what another fundamental difference between an AI enabled PM and an AI native PM. For AI enabled PMs, most of their solution heuristics are written in code. So there is this thing called CI-CD, which is continuous improvement, continuous deployment. But on the contrary, for an AI native PM, it is continuous improvement, continuous deployment, continuous testing, and continuous feedback. There are four such things because the code layer around the AI enabled PM product is what defines what is the experience of the end user. But here it is the code layer and simultaneously the intelligence. So what do data scientists do? They continuously keep doing training of the model and continuously keep giving them feedback so that they can improve themselves while CICD happens at the fundamental code level, which is the infrastructure of the model. Post launch, she will gather user feedback, measure success metrics and plan the next iteration or next feature. The model might need regular retraining, especially if it learns from new data. And if it's coming from new data, the model will consistently keep improving. So even in intelligence first products, you need to have a very strong fine tuned model. And you really need to understand that if your model is not fine tuned, initially it will give poor responses. Monitoring is ongoing if an issue like bias is detected. Essentially, the AI PM never takes their eye off the model performance. They always understand that model performance is what dictates the product roadmap, not the other way around. As mentioned, AI PMs have a wider cycle. Alex often leads a cross-functional squad that might not that might include a data scientist or an ML engineer or someone else. Right? At the core, they are using all functional capabilities of design, engineering, data science, and operations and sales to achieve their workflows. On the contrary, an AI enabled PM might not have that.
Finally, there will be evangelism and education and AI enabled PM has to evangelize new tools into the company so that they can speed up workflows and eventually speed up shipping and shipping is a very, very important factor. Good decision, good product managers are quick decision makers and AI becomes that leverage. On the contrary, AI native PMs would have to evangelize deep machine learning model knowledge about the same thing and they will have to better understand that whether everybody in the company understands model inference to a certain level, to a certain value. Throughout the video, we dropped names like ChatGPT, Copilot, Notion AI, Replit Ghostwriter. These aren't sci-fi. These are available today for any PM to use. The poster child of all AI assistants is ChatGPT. People use it to generate ideas, do computations, understand graphs, understand inferences, do reasoning, and eventually write PRDs and documents which are extremely critical. AI pair programmers, they GitHub Copilot and code, they are AI pair programmers, they help you to write better code, better understand it very well. If you write a bit of code, Copilot can help you prototype faster. Imagine being a PM who is just writing some basic version of a code and show it to a developer and that person will respect you. Finally, so what have we learned? PMing is not dead, it is just changing clothes. And why it is so, so, so important? Because you have to understand that speed is a leverage in product shipping. If you are not fast, your product will lose the market. And that is what we have learned that AI tools enable a PM to now really go out and get customer feedback faster, better and quicker, right? The line between these roles is not black and white, they are out of a spectrum. Native PM are also of the future because if intelligence become better, so it's like thinking that there is somebody who's working on the leverage which is making it better and then somebody using that leverage to making their workflow better. So AI PMs and AI native PMs and AI enabled PMs will always work in symbiosis. As both prosper, we will have a better world and a better startup ecosystem. Thank you very much.